All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Sales Vitamin Podcast, where every Sales Vitamin episode is going to help you get better and help you grow professionally in your sales development. And it's probably going to help your sales team get better. Today's guest is Bill McCormick. He's with Social Sales Link, and this is going to be a great episode. All you listeners need to uh, engulf all of this. This is uh, we're going to talk about LinkedIn. That is where he's an expert, and uh, what he teaches people to uh, to use and engage on LinkedIn every day, so that they can increase their sales. And it's done from a professional standpoint, uh, using it in a B two B standpoint. So, Bill, it's uh, it's an honor to have you on today. I'm excited about this episode. Hey, John, thanks so much. It's such a pleasure and an honor to, to speak to your audience uh, about social selling, what it is, and how we can better leverage LinkedIn to be authentic social sellers rather than be connecting pictures. Awesome. Let's get started with, uh, and, and you've done a fantastic job. You're one of the top, you know, obviously LinkedIn sales trainers out there and using the platform, but how did you get to where you're at now? Where did this light bulb go off? Where did it start? Uh, obviously, you didn't just wake up and say, hey, I'm a LinkedIn expert. Uh, how'd you get to where you are right now? Yeah, I, I, that, that's, a, that's a title I'm still getting comfortable with. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I started in sales in like the 80s and 90s. I was like five years old. But um, no, yeah. seriously, <laughs> I, 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 was in, I, was in the, um, I was in the grocery industry. And um, back then sales, there was really no training and your sales was, was basically based on whatever brand you sold and where it was. Like, for example, I was in the, the, the beverage industry and I worked for a Canada dry distributorship. Well, Coke and Pepsi were number one and number two. So there was, there was no way to use that as, as value. You know, basically back then, how good you were in sales were determined by whether you could get the grocery manager third base seats to the Yankees or 50 yard line tickets to the Giants. I'm, I'm in upstate New York here. Yeah. But so as that went on, I realized I just didn't have the work ethic for, for sales and uh, got out of that and had a few other different careers. But as time went on, I married a woman who was in the printing and promotional products industry. She worked with a gentleman. It was just the two of them, very successful company, international. Uh, and he ended up unfortunately dying unexpectedly. Right. And after nine weeks of going back and forth with his family, none of them had been involved in the business. He had wanted us to buy it at one point. That all fell apart. My wife and I walked away and my wife said, you know what? I'm going to start my own company. So guess who became her salesperson because he had some yeah. sales training, even though, you know, I was yeah. fired from every sales job I had up to, yeah. up to that point. Sales by uh, but, default. So yeah, I was a salesperson by default. But what we found out was when she left that company, people didn't know how to contact her. Contact her. She joined LinkedIn and people started contacting her, her former clients. Wow. And this light bulb went off like, hey, this is the place where our clients are. And at that point, the stat was something like 86% of marketers were on LinkedIn and that's who we were selling to. And so like, okay, I'm a little dull, but I can get this. I can, I can get a LinkedIn profile and I can start using it. Yeah. So that was in 2000, July of 2013. And a few weeks we're coming up to uh, that, that company still active and we're coming up to eight years that we've been, we've been doing that. But in 2015, I went to a trade show in the promotional products world and Alice Hyman was speaking. And uh, you, you're familiar with Alice, a great sales trainer. Her dad uh, was one of the founders of Miller Hyman. And yeah. she talked about using social media in sales. And she, had, she started with LinkedIn. There's about 150 people in the room. She said, hey, if you're using LinkedIn, if you have a LinkedIn profile, stand up. And everybody stood up. You know, if you have a banner image, stay standing. If you have a profile picture. And she went all the way down to if you're on LinkedIn every day and you've gotten business from LinkedIn, stay standing. I was the only one in the room still standing. So I looked around and I'm like, all right, I'm on to something here. You know, my competition hasn't figured this out yet. So yeah. I then became a student of LinkedIn. I found this great book that's uh, kind of outdated now, but it's the LinkedIn sales playbook by a woman by the name of Bryn Tillman. Okay. And I connected with her on LinkedIn. Fast forward a few years later, very successful using LinkedIn. After about three years, I could attribute about a half a million dollars in sales to, to connections I had made on LinkedIn and nurturing people on LinkedIn. And uh, 
I started having people ask me, even my clients, can you teach us how to use LinkedIn? I was in Bermuda. Uh, we had some clients down there. I was at a bank talking about promotional products. And the person I was meeting would say, hey, you do LinkedIn training. Can you teach our loan officers and our mortgage originators how to use LinkedIn for sales? Being a good salesperson, no clue how to do that. I said, sure, I can. <laughs> yeah. The idea of I'll figure this out. Yeah. So I came home. I was in a chat group on LinkedIn of LinkedIn trainers. I reached out in there and said, hey, can somebody help me with this? I don't know how, to, how I'm going to deliver the trainer or what the price of that. And Bryn Tillman was the first to raise her hand and said, I'd be happy to help you. I have a program for bankers. Let's get on a call. Okay. So we began to work together. Uh, I was just going to white label her training. Yeah. But we, were, we found ourselves together in LinkedIn's offices in New York City for an event launch. And we were talking. We really hit it off. And at one point, I just turned to her and I was actually joking. And uh, I said, uh, so, hey, now that I'm working with you, can I put social sales link on my, on my experience section of LinkedIn? And yeah. she said, yeah, you can do that. You can even join our team. And so at that point in time, I left uh, selling for my wife. I joined social sales link. And now I'm happy to say that, that I get to work helping people leverage LinkedIn just the way that I did um, every, every single day. And, uh, and having learned from one of the top LinkedIn trainers in the world being Bryn Tillman. Yeah. So I tell people, if you hear me teach, you've heard Bryn teach because everything I know, I learn from her. And as they say, the rest is history. Yeah, no, it's a great story. Talk about kind of define social selling, because the reason I ask that is because there's so much there's so many misconceptions out there. Oh, well, social selling, that guy just sits around and and tweets and puts out Instagram and sends people things on on LinkedIn. But it's evolved and it's really a powerful tool done correctly. And I think that's the key. But what define social selling for for the audience and how you look at it and define it. Yeah, so I'll give you our definition because there are tons of definitions out there. And one of the things you have to realize is, is that there's a difference between social selling and social media marketing. Social media marketing is putting stuff out there, build it, and they will come. Maybe they'll find your stuff, they'll engage, and, and that will lead to a conversation. Right. What we say about social selling, social selling is about building relationships, being a resource, and providing real value, understanding that those sales will come when the time is right. And so it's leveraging platforms such as LinkedIn so that we can attract, teach, and engage our targeted buyers, especially where we've come from in the last year. You know, um, Bob Berg and Endless Pearl said it, you know, all things being equal, people do business with people they want, know, like, and trust. Right. Well, now that we're in this virtual environment, how do people get to know us, then get to like us, and then get to trust us? Well, on social, using social selling, we can attract them to our profiles with a good quality profile that's not about us, but it's about them. They can get to like us and know us. We can teach them when they land there. We can teach them with content, not what we want to tell them, but what they want to hear, things that address what they're trying, with the problems they're trying to solve. And then we have to engage with them. As my friend Ed Week says, it's social media. Don't forget to be social. Right. And so when we're, we do that, not only do we establish relationships, that's important. But at the end of the day, what you really want to establish is credibility. Because if you don't have credibility with someone, you can have a relationship with them. They'll go golfing with you. They'll right. go let you buy a, buy a beer for them at the bar. But if you don't have credibility, you're not the one they're going to call when they, when they need your help, when they need your solution. So it's really about attracting teaching and engaging them so that you become that thought leader, you become the person that they turn to, you know, like with Bryn, she was the thought leader in LinkedIn training. So when I needed help, she was the one that I turned to and right. uh, it worked out really well. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's great information. What about, talk about prospecting versus lead generation, because those are two different things, but from a LinkedIn standpoint, if you use it correctly, you can kind of do both of those. Yeah. So that's how I used LinkedIn when I first started is I just looked for marketing professionals that I could identify in clients. And then I put them into my, into my sales process. The, the mistake we're seeing people make on LinkedIn now, first of all, there's these lead generation companies that are saying, you know, Hey John, just give me an idea of who your ideal clients are and we'll do all the outreach. We'll send, we'll set, 
85 appointments for you a week. Forget about the fact that you couldn't even do 85 appointments a week. They, they just throw these numbers out. And right. what, what happens is, is they start with this, with this broad or maybe a narrow focus of who they're looking for, who's your ideal client. And they're doing the outreach for you, which first of all, is really not very authentic. Right. Because you know who you want to do business with. So back in the, ni- the, the late 90s, I was in pest control services, right? Right. And so it's on my LinkedIn profile. About two or three times a month, I get a message from someone who wants to connect because they help pest control companies get 55% more contacts over this. They misidentified me. When yeah. I reached out to them, they're like, oh, well, our targeting was off. Yeah, no, duh. <laughs> yeah. And so what, what happens is when we <laughs> give over control of our prospecting and or our lead generation, we kind of just have to take the results that are given. But if you, and, and what happens there is people end up mass, mass connecting with people. And, and by the way, LinkedIn just instituted a new policy. They only allow 100 invitations per week. Okay. All right, which I think is great. These people think it's bad because they can't send out a thousand connection requests. And so what, what happens, first of all, that kind of automation violates LinkedIn's terms of use and get you shut down but it pisses people off if I can say that. Yeah, yeah. I, I know a number of people that say, listen, I don't even go on LinkedIn anymore because every time I go on, it, it's, a, it's a pitch. It's a pitch right. for, my, for my services. And so what we say is, is when you start with that broad of an outreach, what ends up happening is you may get a 5% return and, and you may think that's really, really great, but you don't know what happens to the other 95%. Right. Because when we're cold calling, People are just looking at a, I don't know where my phone is, oh, it's right there. So when we're cold calling, we're just looking at a number, we're hanging up on it. When, when people are mass emailing us, we're seeing a name and an email, but then we're just deleting it. Yeah. When you mass do mass outreach on LinkedIn, people are looking at your picture, they're looking at your name, and they're looking at your company name. And it's much more personal because they're, they, they're, a, they're associating you with this kind of spam outreach, and it ends up hurting you in the long run. So what we talk about, is slowing down your outreach to speed up your outcome. So rather than doing 100, you know, throw, throw, throw 100 against the wall and hope that five will stick, is finding your ideal clients and nurturing them or looking for an introduction from a mutual connection, which we can talk about a little bit more that the real power of LinkedIn is in the referral process. Right. And then nurturing them along until you can have a sales conversation and if the sales conversation doesn't pan out, you haven't burned that bridge. Yeah. We, we still have clients. We have clients that, that we pitched to a year ago that are now coming back to us and saying, hey, you know what? We weren't ready then, but we're ready now. And because we didn't spam them, we didn't keep harping on them. We didn't bug them or nag them. Now they're saying, you know what? We're ready. And, and you're the people that we, that we want to, to go at. So LinkedIn can be very powerful for prospecting can be very powerful for lead generation, but you have to do it the right way because it's all about building relationships. Yeah. So let's, that's a good lead into pitching versus selling. And when I say selling, I'm talking about adding value because that's really what you've got to do on LinkedIn. And uh, obviously that's an important part of what you do. How, how do you take your customers through the, what are the best ways to, to kind of stay away from that pitching and getting more to the adding value? How do you go about adding value via LinkedIn? Well, first it all starts with your profile. As I, it's the foundation of everything. All roads lead back to the profile because as you're looking at people's profiles, they're getting, they're getting notified. Hey, John Basong just viewed your profile. Right. And so what are they seeing when they land there? Most people most people's LinkedIn profiles is about the, are about them. They're set up like a resume because that's what LinkedIn defaults to. So what we say is transform your, your profile from a resume to a resource. Make it be about your ideal client. It, you know, there's, there's really, with all content, but it starts with your, with your profile, there's really five things that we, that we wanna see, see happen. We, wanna, we want it to resonate with our ideal clients. When they land and they look, for example, at our headline, which is the area right underneath our name, we wanted them to know that, that we helped them, right? So we right. want to resonate. 
we want to create some curiosity. You know, you ever see a dog when there's a funny sound and they kind of tilt their head sideways that line of yeah. tilt? We want to create those kind of moments of what I call draw and lean in moments. We're like, yeah. I never, I never thought of that before. We want to teach them something new that gets them thinking differently about their problem that they're facing. And, and at the end, what we want is we want to get more, more raised hands. So it starts with the profile. And then from there, as you're finding your ideal clients, you have to find a context to connect with them and selling to them is not a context. So right. looking at their profile, engaging in their content, people create content for it to be engaged with. So engage on their content, comment on their content, and not just a, hey, great post, John, but wow, I really like what you said about X, Y, Z, I think A, B, C, right. so that you, you're having a conversation and that will give you the context. What we see most people doing today is, hi, John, I see we're connected to, we have some mutual friends in, in common, or we have some mutual connections in common, please add me to your LinkedIn profile. That's right. kind of the LinkedIn, that's kind of, I call it the LinkedIn pickup line. It's like the guys that go in and go up to a woman and say, hey, come here often. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't mean <laughs> yeah. anything. Yeah. You, you really want to find a way so that you can connect with them with value. And then when you do connect with them, you have to have a welcome message, something that you send them, hey, John. Thanks for connecting with me on LinkedIn. Not sure if you're exploring LinkedIn for business development, but if you are, I have some complimentary resources I'd love to share with you. Let me know if you want them. Not sending them right away, but asking for that permission to do it. And so that's where the value comes in. And this is where many salespeople miss the boat. What they're doing is as soon as somebody connects with them, they're pitching them or they're pitching in their connection request. And you haven't earned the right. We have to earn the right to have a sales conversation. Right. And so the way that we do that is first connecting and then just sharing value and insight. You know, so yeah. you're in you're in the trucking world. So if you're you're connecting to a, a, a lease manager for, for a trucking company, you're gonna maybe ask them if they're interested in, you know, five tips, five, five things that every lease manager should consider before right. purchasing a new fleet. And it's not a pitch at all. It's something that if they never contact you, they've learned something. Right? Yeah. Because that's where you start to develop that credibility because the time might not be right now, but it will be down, down the road. So having your profile right, connecting in the right way, and then providing value and not pitching. And it's so counterintuitive for us as salespeople because we've been taught our whole lives to pitch, pitch have your elevator pitch ready. Yeah, We work with companies just like yours, but you have to think of LinkedIn as a networking room because that's what it is. It's a 24 hour a day, seven day a week, 365 day a year networking room that when you come into a conversation, so you wouldn't walk up to a circle of people in a networking event, thrust your card into all of their faces and say, we help companies just like yours because you don't even know what they do. Right. You would come in, you would listen to the conversation and you look for a way to introduce yourself and to begin to have a conversation that will lead down the road of you saying, hey, and this is who we help and this is how we help them. And, and I think what happened in the pandemic was we had all these people, these salespeople who either went out and knocked on doors or set appointments on the phone and met people right across the table. And suddenly they had that taken away from them. And whether it was the sales leaders that said, listen, you still need to make this many contacts or it was just their desperation just started reaching out to people on LinkedIn, pitching and pitching and pitching. And you know, that's where we're at today. It really hasn't changed, even though the, we're, we're beginning to open back up. I, can, I think the McKinstry and company came out with a, with a, a, a survey recently and 75% of the companies they talked to said that, that even when they reopen, they're gonna want a first meeting with a rep to be either on the phone or virtually. Right. So, so we're, we're they're, they're pulling that ability for us to sit across the table from people. And this is becoming more common that we're looking into a, a camera rather yeah. than we're looking in the eyes of people. And we just have to get comfortable with that. Yeah, absolutely. How important is it for sales professionals to embrace creating the content and then sharing that content as part of the adding the value from a LinkedIn standpoint? Well, it's very important. And I know many of the sales people that are listening to this just cringe when you said create content, because sometimes we're, we just don't 
We just don't think we can. But listen, you're creating right. content every day, right? right. We, what we say all the time is you have to capture your own genius. You're answering client emails and their questions. You're on sales calls, whether it's on Zoom or it's over the phone. And you're saying these nuggets of, of truth that you can capture and use that to create content. You can also curate content, which curating content means to go out and find it, find right. content that someone else has done. But listen, don't just share that article. Tell people what you got from that article and ask their opinion on it. Here are some stats. We have a great friend in the Netherlands named Richard Vanderblom, and he um, he's a LinkedIn trainer like us, but he does a lot of research on LinkedIn. He just came out with these stats that about content, 86% of all LinkedIn members, all right, so that's 750 million worldwide don't publish or engage with content in their feed, all right? So, so you can become in the 14% just by engaging with people on your newsfeed. Right. Only, only 4% of LinkedIn members create 90% of the content that you see on LinkedIn. And then the last stat he gave was if you publish twice a week, it will double your visibility within your network, right? So, so we're not saying that you have to create content every single day, although, right. although I would encourage you to work up to that, but just twice a week. And so what I say, and I teach all of my clients is you have to become consistent. This is just like the gym. And if you're especially paying for like sales navigator, you have to think of that as a gym membership. You just don't drive past the gym, wave at it, and you get healthier and you get stronger. You actually have to go in there and work it. And right. it's the same with it's the same with LinkedIn. So what, what we need to do is, is be more consistent. James Clear in his book, Atomic Habits, said, we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our system. So you have to create a system for using LinkedIn regularly. And if it's posting twice a week, finding that content and, and doing it consistently on Tuesdays and Thursdays or Mondays and Wednesdays, but, but figure that out. And here's why it's to get to your question. This is why it's important. That's what's going to separate you out from the, from your competition. Right. Corporate visions had a study a couple of years ago, said 74% of B2B buyers went with the sales rep. That was the first to add value and insight, not the one that had the cheapest um, price, not the one that said they had the best customer service, not the one that, that gave them that gift or those tickets or whatever, but the first to provide value and insight. And so if you're a salesman or salesperson listening to this, my question to you is, how are you providing value and insight? You can do that through posting good quality content on LinkedIn, not what you want to say, but what your clients want to hear. And that's a, a, an important part of it, which is social listening finding out what it is, your, what are the problems and struggles your clients are having and answering those questions because that's what they care about. Too often than not, we as salespeople talk about what we want to say and that's not what our clients want to hear. Yeah, no, those are, those are uh, I call them sales vitamins. You just dished out a whole whole jar full of sales vitamins for everybody. Well, I'm, I'm ready for that did. question. I actually have a multivitamin for that. <laughs> okay, okay. The... Uh, Talk about your, the programs you offer there, kind of give the listeners an idea of, of the programs and, and what that looks like uh, when some, when a, when a, your customer goes through that, that process, talk about what you offer there at social sales link. Yeah. Thanks, John. So we have two sides of our business. One is the, the public side. So if you're a, an independent sales rep, that's not part of a team or you're an entrepreneur or a small business owner, we have a, a great monthly program. Uh, we do monthly coaching calls with folks. It's only $29 a month. You have eight opportunities to come in and talk with Bryn, myself, Bob Woods, Sally Jo Lamont, the rest of the team. And we do those on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern, Thursday, 1 p.m. And we also have an e-learning aspect of that that's, that's $99. Very low cost, but very, very high value. And it's such a great network. We have about 200 people that are part of that coaching community now. They've been passing business along to each other, helping each other out. That's been fun to see. So that's the public side. Then there's the corporate side. So that's one of my specialties is working with corporate sales teams to customize and develop a social selling strategy right along the lines of, of what we call the four, the four pillars of social selling, which is optimizing your profile, building relationships, um, meeting and connecting with the right people and engaging, engaging with insights. And so what we'll do is we'll meet with a sales team and we'll develop a whole strategy around that. 
And then we teach that either over Zoom or we will come and do it live in person, although that hasn't been happening a lot lately. Yeah. And, uh, so folks can contact me directly for, for some information about that. Okay. What are some of the things that you see from a future standpoint that you see maybe be coming up with LinkedIn, any new tools, any new things that they've got going on that you're like, Hey, uh, this is coming. So you need to start embracing this as well. Well, so they've, they've come out with a couple of new features recently. Uh, cover story is one where, where when you hover over someone's uh, profile picture, it plays a video and uh, okay. that has to be done on mobile. So that's kind of neat. They did that for really for folks that are using it more as a resume so that they could they could talk about themselves. But right. I would say, you know, make sure you use that to talk about your clients and, and how the value that you bring. And the other is creator mode, which they just came out with, which the, the jury's still out on that. It just kind of rearranges your profile more. The featured section is something they came out with a, a, about a year and a half ago which really helps you spotlight and highlight your, your content. We call it a scroll stopper. And what creator mode does, one of the things it does is just move that higher up in your profile so people see it quicker. I, I think what you'll see happening in LinkedIn is more of a crackdown on automation because it is against their rules. And there are a lot of people that are trying to use that. And it's really one of the things that, that's hurting LinkedIn the most. But um, you know they're really tight-lipped about what they're doing and, and how they're how they're going to future roll out in the future new aspects. But listen, in 2016, I believe it was, Microsoft bought LinkedIn for $26 billion. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not. Top three things right now, if I said, hey, Bill, uh, from the people you work with and all the companies you've worked with, some of the top names in the industry that I know that you work with, You've got a, a sales professional out there right now that really, uh, let's say they're maybe engaged with LinkedIn, but not. What are three things that they need to do just to meet the, uh, call it a minimum viable product on LinkedIn? What do they need to do minimum to make sure that that they're set up correctly? So first of all is, is optimize your profile and write it from the standpoint of your client and not, or your prospect and not from, from you. Don't make it be a resume. So do that first. Right. Connect with intention, understand who you want to connect with and connect with purpose with a reason. And the reason cannot be to sell to them. And then the, the third thing I would say is follow some of the top LinkedIn trainers, myself, Bryn Tillman, Richard Vanderblom, Andy Foote are just a few that, that I would suggest. And because LinkedIn is changing constantly and that's, uh, you know, we call it job security. But, uh, but it, it's easy to get behind the eight ball with it. So make sure you're following the, the, the right folks or, you know, just sign up with us because we can help you. That's right. That's right. All you listeners, uh, that's a good point. What's the best way for the listeners to get in touch with you, uh, to get in touch with your organization? Obviously, LinkedIn's one. <laughs> yeah, sure. Definitely find me on LinkedIn. Please send me a note saying that you heard me here on the Sales Vitamin Podcast. Be happy to, to accept your, your connection request. And, and it, it, there are a number of Bill McCormick's on there. So just uh, put in the company Social Sales Link and, and you can find me there. But also go to socialsaleslink.com slash library. And if you go there, you can sign up for a free silver membership with our community and you'll have access to our complete content library, which, you know, there, there are downloads there. There are past webinars we've done. We do two master classes uh, a month with some of the top sales and marketing trainers in, in the country. Daryl yeah. Amy and Larry Levine have been on that. I mentioned Richard Vanderblum. He was Jesse Rothstein, who is a, a global sales uh, leader for LinkedIn for Sales Navigator, was on just a couple of weeks ago. Keenan, the sales trainer, yeah. for selling many, many top names we have. And you can go and watch those for free. So socialsaleslink.com slash library, and you can sign up to be a free content subscriber. Awesome. All right. So all you listeners get to that website, get to, uh, to that library and uh, start soaking up that uh, LinkedIn information. You've also got uh, a new book in the works kind of on the front end that's coming out uh, later. Yeah, probably later, later in 2021, it'll be called the Authentic uh, Social Seller. Also, if you go to the Sales Expert channel, both Bryn and I are members of the Sales Experts channel, and we have a show every Monday at noon Eastern called Making Sales Social. We bring in some of the top names in, uh, in sales and marketing. We talk to them, what they're teaching their clients and how we transform that into virtual and social selling. 
Okay. Awesome stuff. And all you listeners, if you don't believe in the uh, power of LinkedIn or just how powerful it can be, get to this site, start looking at this information. Uh, Bill and his team, they've been endorsed by the king of sales, Jeffrey Gitmer on his website. You do not get that endorsement. Jeffrey's the king of sales for a reason. He's awesome. And he's endorsed these guys. So they know what they're doing. Make sure uh, uh, get to this website and check these guys out. Last question for you. Every guest gets this question. You've got one sales vitamin to hand out today. Uh, what's one, we'll call it a LinkedIn vitamin that you want to leave the listeners with today? Well, so it's a multivitamin. Okay, that, great. Those that are that the best kind. Of, that consists of five parts, okay? Okay. Make sure your profile is a resource. It's not a resume. Number two, socially listen. Listen to what it is your clients are, are what are their concerns and address those. Curate, create, and engage on content consistently. Nurture your first degree network. I guarantee you, you're already connected to some of your clients already and you don't even know it. And then lastly, leverage your network for referrals. And, and John, that's, not, that's something we didn't even get to talk about, the power of referrals. Yeah, not on LinkedIn. So maybe that's a future episode. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. A whole episode on referrals. Uh, I agree a hundred percent. So all you listeners, those five things right there, if you just took one of those things a week, worked on it, you're going to see uh, results. Uh, you can count on it. Well, Bill, it's been great having you on today, man. Uh, your uh, company, obviously very successful and you're really helping out the uh, sales profession. So I just want to thank you for everything you do for the sales profession and uh, helping people get better and, and stronger on LinkedIn. I think that's awesome. And then thank you for your time today. Well, John, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks to the listeners for spending their time to listen to this. Uh, now you can go out and socially sell because you're vitamin fortified. There you go. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.